Peace and blessings viewers. Today we're going to be talking about what we were going to be talking about in the next video which is virtue and what that means. So please enjoy. This will be episode 6. There is a time and in that time a space. In this eventual space so far out of nowhere exists something. Something that exists in all the living and does not disappear when life ends. That something is located on a distant place. It is located near you, next to you, within you. Follow me into the recesses of what exists on and in between. The darkness and light in your mind, in your heart, and even in your eyes. Where some say the soul's window lies, drift with us where truth and illusion isn't far, caught in a deadlock, which will win. Welcome to Truth Talks and Theory. Please stand by. In life at times, you encounter the extraordinary, the wise, the sharp, the unwavering. The heroes of mankind are there, few and far between. But should we not seek out the same qualities? Should we lie down with closed fists, accepting our common failings? No. Gather the examples. Let us seek the truth. And let us be more. By God's will. Welcome to Truth Talks and Theory. So today's subject is going to be human virtue and what that means between you and God and why that's so important. So when we're trying to connect to God, these divine characteristics that we call virtues place as a special realm when connecting to God. What that means is when it comes to human beings versus animals, animals could display certain behaviors, but I wouldn't classify them as virtues. So as a human being, you're capable of having this attribute. So these attributes or characteristics, they have a semblance of what God would himself have. So that comes from the idea behind the soul. In any case, human virtue altogether is the connection between God and humans. So what we found is what makes human beings special is our capacity to enact and contain virtue. So what that means is, in our channel, we're going to explore many different types of virtues. Like in the past video, we briefly glossed over sincerity. If you ever think about what makes a human being valuable or a worthy human being, you're most likely looking at a certain virtue or characteristic that they show that stems from a virtue. For example, courage or bravery. If you like something like a sp sports or you like even someone, um, you look up to someone that's a philosopher, you're talking about the innate virtues they carry. So as for someone that's an athlete that competes out there, maybe you're talking about some courage, you're talking about some heart. Whereas if you're talking about a philosopher, you're talking about the capacity to learn, you're talking about knowledge, you're talking about intelligence. So all these things are actually within the facet of virtue. And what we want to do is provide the information of what makes a virtue a virtue versus what makes something just a personality trait. So for every positive thing like virtue, there's that negative which we call a vice. And you're going to be at the mercy of these vices and some can get very vicious. For example, ignorance especially if you don't have the virtue 
to be able to counter it. A really powerful virtue to counter ignorance is the virtue of learn. A lot of times people think that learning is an innate ability, but in fact it is a virtue. And what that means is as long as you're able to figure out how to learn, you will always be able to combat ignorance. But oftentimes, somebody can fail to grow in that virtue of learn, for example, and they could fall into a very powerful trap of ignorance. That being said, there's also plenty of other very brutal vices out there, one of them being dishonest. If you're a dishonest human being, it not only conflicts with things on the external world, such as your relationships with your family, with your friends, uh, with your coworkers, etc., but also damages what's internal as well, allowing certain other vices to uh, become a part of you, like rationalization. You could, in fact, um, we all know the concept of lying to yourself, but what you probably don't know is how often that can occur without the right virtue to counter it. So another thing about virtue is it grows from us at a very young age and it only stops growing if we fail to pursue it. A good example is even if a child is at the age of four or five, they start understanding the concepts of honesty and dishonesty. They could tell when they are being truthful and when they are not. So in that case, somewhere along the lines, what happens is if a human being starts exhibiting honesty, unless they are continuously honest and continue to tell the truth throughout their years, entering their teenage years, they could give in to dishonesty, which means that even though we as human beings have the capacity to show virtue at a very young age, we also have the capacity to show vice at a young age. That being said, virtue should always be grown and should always be focused on its higher levels of it. A good example of this is if you're constantly honest, you're going to reach a level of integrity, which is a, another virtue. Speaking of honesty, in the last episode, we talked about the bubble that honesty fits in, which is the greater virtue of sincerity. Now, a human being can only be sincere when they are actually sincere. It sounds like circular thinking. However, it is a deafening truth behind what it means to have virtue. If you want to attain a virtue, you need to be able to exhibit it. Anytime you exhibit only a part of it or an essence of it, it is not its complete form. So rather, what needs to happen is, if I want to be a sincere human being, have to be sincere in an almost steady, regular pace. With that being said, virtue is exercised and exhibited, not dormant and latent. So all in all, for a human being to be virtuous, it needs to be exercised. Don't believe for a fact that you have hidden virtue in you or you have virtue in you that's going to come out later on. How virtue works is it's acted out on in the immediate and constantly acted out on. And only then can a human being exhibit virtue or have a semblance of that virtue. If a human being says that they have the potential to be virtuous, but they themselves are not there yet, that's simply them not being virtuous. So in that way, if a human being wants to become virtuous, they need to act out on the virtue here and now. So we briefly glossed over the virtues versus vices. That, With that understanding, virtues are direct competing sources to vices. When a human being is more virtuous, they are naturally less vice-filled. That also applies on the opposite spectrum. If a human being is more viceful or vice-filled, then they are most likely less virtuous. 
And when that happens, that's what we call the human condition or a duality, where in the prior video, we talked about the theory of the honeycomb. This is where it's an arm wrestle to see which is the more competing force in your daily life. So does that mean that if you exhibit virtue or enough virtue, then you are living a good life or a proper life? Actually, this is where the main understanding or the purpose of life comes in, the epistemological approach, which is virtue's main objective is to serve God. As such, they are always good to have, but a good tool is only means that what the tool is used for. If I have a proper hammer, a really sturdy hammer, I could use it to build something or I could use it to destroy something. Having necessary virtue just means that you have divine qualities and these divine qualities, while they are really good to have, the proper use of one is even more important. And in this case, our purpose in life is to use virtue to serve God. A good example is an intelligent person. An intelligent person could very well use that intelligence for something immoral. If I was really keen on how to read someone in a psyche perspective, I could use that to manipulate them. And that would make the virtue a immoral tool. Whereas there's the other side to it as well, that you could be intelligent in something and just simply use it for something like a simulator, which doesn't truly add to God or add to your purpose. So just to expand on that example, just a little bit more. If a human being is smart enough or intelligent enough to create a simulation of something, let's say a simulation of uh, a movie, right? They want to create uh, an idea of what life represents. That movie could have nothing to do with morality, could have nothing to do with uh, your purpose in life. It could have nothing to do with very much anything outside of just exercising that virtue. So in that way, that would make the tool rather useless. Now, this does not mean that virtue is used in a monostatic kind of way, such as monk or priesthood rather can be very well exhibited in our daily functions, which mindfulness of God, it will still be a service to. Going back to the analogy of creating something with your virtue. Now, even if you want to spread goodness or kindness and you have mindfulness of God and intention to please God in doing that, that will always be a way of fulfilling your purpose and making that virtue proper. Now, I'm going to hit you with something pretty powerful, just to think. Virtues are seemingly allowed to exist within all humans. The interesting or the profound part about that is to what extent? It's still a very complex question. Meaning, how does your virtues work inside you? Who gets virtues? Uh, how much virtue do they have? That's something we all explore in a book that's very complex subject matter. But I just want to throw that at you to remember that virtues aren't as simply as this person is an honest person, this person is a dishonest person. It goes in a very powerful, um, almost like clockwork gear, like rotation. They could have many different factors involved in who they are and how many virtues are involved and likewise how many vices are involved. But just to give you a, a nice simple lesson, when one directs themselves towards virtue, it will grow more in action. And constant action can only mean constant growth of the virtue. Anytime that you want to grow in a particular virtue, just remember that you need to continuously act out on it. A good example I always give out is uh, of the virtue of charity, to be charitable. So go out there and do good and do it with the mindfulness of God and constantly do it. When you constantly do it, 
I guarantee that virtue in you will grow. Even within virtue, as explained in the prior video here, there are main categories and subcategories. And in the subcategories, all of them connect to what we call the CNTR of the virtue that enables it to exist within someone. When the CNTR is in danger or threatened, it harms the overall virtue and without it, one cannot exhibit that virtue, theoretically put. The evidence behind this is strong as well, as we here have taken the time to deliberately tackle on these centers within vices and found resounding success, especially with other areas of the same vice. What this all means is every single vice has a core or heart. And that goes for virtues as well. A good example is selfishness is a vice. And the subcategory and the heart of that vice is going to be the center called self-centeredness. Now, if a human being overcomes self-centeredness, it starts dismantling the whole part of them being selfish. And self-centeredness is solely or chiefly being concerned with your own welfare. So what I'm here to tell you, audience and viewers, is you want to use your virtues and you want to use them for God. And in that way, you'll always be able to find the reality of your purpose. If you have really good tendencies to show virtue, just direct them to really good things and to keep a conscious mind of God in doing so. Till then, I'll see you on the next videos, which most likely will be on vices. So tune in for that. Go down, more down. Well, I still gotta start the camera. Okay. Yeah. Too late. It. Yeah. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Stop. I, I gotta do everything. Yeah, so. that's fine. Leave it. Go. Okay. Do it. Okay. Camera one rolling. Sincerity is. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, my bad. I'll get back to you. <laughs> pull it up, Tang. Pull it up, Jamie. Just like Joe Rogan. No, pull it up, Tang. What is the heart of sincerity? It's habitual honesty. That's all I know. It's habitual honesty. Veracity. Veracity.